All right, do you love the 50s and 60s? Well, my girl Misty does. So she created this project that I'm going to update for you. Before we start talking about all of that, you know I'm going to ask you to please do all of the things. You know what they are. All right, so I said, Misty is the one who created this. She did do it in collaboration with the Fantastic Ladies Group on Facebook. And so I will have her channel linked down below. I will have the Fantastic Ladies linked in the description box also. And uh, this is a prompt-based project based on the 50s and 60s. It is, I think, 50 prompts. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, not positive, but I'm pretty sure. And there were a couple that were an assist from Jessica on this one. She started this November 25th of 2022. It's going to run through November 24th of 2023. It is to be monthly, bi-monthly updated on or around, pretty close to the 25th. The hashtag for social media, at the hop project pan. Okay? Now with this, you knew I was going to do it, right? I mean, come on. Misty created it. So, you know I love Misty's stuff. You know I'm I'm the president of her fan club still. No one has dethroned me yet. And um, this is an era that I absolutely love the music from this era. I like a lot of the TV shows from this era. The prompts she put in here are amazing, you guys. They are so fun. So, this is one that I definitely was going to jump all over. And she did this, like, right up my alley. It is all completely open. We were allowed to set this up kind of however we wanted, pick as many products as we wanted to put in, set usage goals, finish goals, whatever we wanted to do. Misty likes to do her projects, even the prompt-based ones, where she will pick an item for every single prompt that's in there and have them all ready to go for the beginning of the project. And now, I fly by the seat of my pants, but then there are other people who love doing the random generation, which is awesome. And I think sometimes even the people that do that have already picked a lot of their products. And then there's people, I know I know, I caught Andrea doing this once, so we're going to throw her under the bus just a little bit. She said that for some of this stuff, it was easier to just go right down the list and do them that way and not have to randomly generate or do whatever. So Misty left this up to our own devices. We could do this in whatever manner we chose. For me, it's kind of a pick and choose type of thing, just depending on how the mood strikes me that day. So with all of that being said, let's talk about what I have in here. The first one I have is for saddle shoes. That's something with black and white packaging. I brought in this gift with purchase that I had gotten from NARS. It is the light reflecting setting powder. It's in translucent crystal. Now, I thought, okay, I'm just going to bring this in for 10 uses. I mean, it's, you can kind of see it on my finger. But when I, I mean, you can't see it on my hand, really. It does, I mean, it doesn't look white, white on my hand. Um, and I was going to bring it in for 10 uses, and I thought, I just want to get a feel for it, see how I like it. It's really finely milled. It's very, very nice. I absolutely love this powder. I'm actually thinking that I'm going to buy a full size. Yeah, I know, I know. I haven't even hit pan in this, but I go through powders, you guys. So I love this. I stopped at 19 uses. <laughs> Went a little above and beyond. For the purposes of the project, this is a rollout. This is a completed prompt. We are done. So then I had Rock Around the Clock, something you use morning and night. With that, I brought in the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid Serum, uh, whatever, Hyaluronic Acid. And you can see from my not so clear lines because I apparently can't draw a straight line where we started and where we are now. Yeah, I'm at a little bit of an angle on that. And I'm actually a little bit high too. There's a little, that's why, yeah, whatever. It went from 70.3 grams to 62.2. I'm a little bit under the line. I don't exactly know what I was doing when I did that. So I'm thinking that's got, it'll be two months before that one's finished off just based on how much I've used and how much is left. I think it's about two months. So that's going to stay in the project. Then for Tutti Frutti, something fruit themed, package, scent, etc. I brought in Cleona's Dragon Fruit Palette. Okay. This I brought in to do as no pan left behind. Okay. These are not hard to open. It's just my hands aren't working. So I did my post-it note and then we've got all kinds of reflections, but I think you're getting a pretty good view of what all of the colors are. Now with this, come back, come back. Okay. With this, I have used bubbles, refresh, 
I believe it's Hyloceris. And exotic, I actually have on today, I have used Fruit Fizz and Effervescent. So we're going to give you some swatches of those just because these are so fun. Okay, so those are the first two. And I am going to tell you that I use bubbles as like an inner corner type of thing. And then refresh. I don't know if I have any pictures of refresh or not. But then we've got Hylocerus and Exotic, which are these two. And I don't know if you can tell. I, I, I do have a picture of this. I will get you a close-up of this. Um, Exotic is the one that I am wearing today. And I need to clean up my fingers now. I ran out of fingers. These are really fun. They're incredibly vibrant. And they made the rest of the burgundy that I was trying to work with look like absolute crap. But that's okay. And then we've got Fruit Fizz and Effervescent. And then Effervescent is actually my inner corner highlight. So I know there was a close-up of that that you got to see. So we're not done, but... We're getting there, and I'm trying to get a little bit better about getting pictures for some of these for you guys, so hopefully I had all of that going on. Since I am not done, this is going to remain in the project, but these are all of the ones that I have done. And, yeah, this one is effervescent. That's what's in my inner corner. Fruit Fizz is fun, too. And I love, love, love. I think that was Refresh. Gorgeous pink. Anyway. That's where we're at with that. A month? Maybe? Maybe I'll drag it out a little bit. I don't know. I haven't decided, but working on it. All right, then hula hoop. Something in round packaging. So for that, I brought in the Cleona Fruit Lighter. This one is in Pattaya, and it was part of that same Dragon Fruit Collection. I don't know if it's the Dragon Fruit Collection or not. That's what I keep calling it. It was the Emily Violet Marie Collaboration. And I got to be kind of careful because these things fall out. That is Pattaya. There is a mirror there. We No, there's, yeah, I think there's a mirror there. I don't know. Whatever. But that is what that looks like. And I like this, but I am going to tell you, this is something that you should perhaps go heavy handed on because it is very pink. I mean, you can kind of see that. It's, it's pink. Okay. Oh, now see, it doesn't look pink there. Oh yeah. I think you're getting the shift on that. Hopefully it's incredibly pink and it actually overpowered a little bit on the blush. And I didn't realize that the first couple times I used it, but by the third time I was like, okay, now we, now we gotta be careful with this one. So I did get my five uses on it for the purposes of this project. It is completed and it is another rollout. So yay me. I do like it. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying I need to be careful because I like highlighter. I mean, obviously. I always joke about it. I'm the one who wants to be landing the planes with my cheekbones. But that has such a, a pigment with that shift that it actually startled me. So... I don't know, maybe someday I'll wear it without a blush at all and just wear that and see what it does. That would be fun. Anyway, the next one is I Love Lucy, the job switching episode. So it is an item that smells like chocolate or candy. And I brought in my Hershey's Kisses um, Special Dark Palette from Glamlight. This is the that one. Yeah, wow, okay. My goal on this is to just use each of the pans three times. This is the purple palette. I have used each one twice. So I have one more use on this and then this will be completed. And I'm sure that that I will get done in the next month. I may or may not. Well, I'll get it done in the next month. This one is one that stays here. I have it in both places because purple. Of course I do. I love it. All right. But not quite finished yet. Staying in for now. Then we have 16 candles. Love that song. It's also a good movie. Uh, this is a product you wish you had as a teen. With this, I wish I had bronzer as a teen. 
I, bronzer wasn't a thing for me. And I had gotten this as part of a gift with purchase by this much from Lancome and you get this bag and it has all these things. So this is the Star Bronzer Natural Glow. I just put this in to use eight times just because I wanted to see how the shade worked for me. And this was, um, I actually used it nine accidentally just because I kind of kept going with it. I like it. It works really well. It just makes my finger look dirty. You can't really. But okay, I'm packing this as much as I can. And no, it's not patchy on my face. I don't know. Okay, yeah, you can see it. This is actually a nice light color. It does work really well for me. I do enjoy the bronzer. I think it wears well. I'm very, very happy to have it. That is a completed prompt and a rollout. Then Maybelline, a product from Maybelline or a drugstore product. And we did discuss the whole Chuck Berry and the whole Maybelline was the sister for the, yeah, we did that last episode. Go back and watch it. It's in the playlist because I'll just screw it up if I do it, try and explain it again. Um, so I brought in the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Gel Eye Pencil Liner in, Eye Pencil Liner, wow. This is number 940. This is Rich Amethyst. I brought this in for, okay, we're um, running out of space. I brought this in for 10 uses. I am at six. And that's it right there. It is a gorgeous purple. I truly do love it. And it works pretty well with the Hershey's palette too, by the way, in case anybody cared. But I still have four more uses, so that is staying in also. Then, um, oh, and I actually was measuring it, but I don't think I have a, a new place to mark yet for you. Then I have 42, which is Gumby, a putty or cream product, which I forgot to grab. So give me just a second. Okay, I'm back. So the product that I grabbed was the Alley Oop Stack the Odds in Sassy Pants. This is a, uh, Deb and Danny talked me into purchasing it. There, they tempted me into purchasing it because I really wanted to try it. I put this in for 10 uses. I, I'm at 14. Every time I put this into something, I just keep using it. So this is... There we go. It's got a little mirror on it, but this, and you can see we hit pan. Yes. So we've got a bronzer, a blush, and a highlighter. The cool thing about the highlighter, in my opinion, is that it is a kind of a pink tone and, um, okay, we're going to go the other direction. So I'm kind of bummed that I'm actually hitting pan in that bronzer because I kind of wanted it to last a little longer. I didn't think I was actually even going to like a cream bronzer, but I like this one. And you can't get it sold separately. There's the blush. Okay, now it, it is not that crazy on my face. I go a little bit lighter than that. But I actually really love this highlighter too. The highlighter has, you're not going to see it. Shoot. When I put it on my face, I can see that there's a pink tone to it, and I don't think you guys can. I don't think that's going to come through on camera, but it does have a pink hue to it. I love this. I really love this. I wish that I could get the bronzer separately. The blush is going to take me a while to get through, but I like that highlighter too. So, like I said, um, 14 uses. <laughs> Anyway, that for the purposes of this project is done and is a rollout. Will I keep using it? Yeah, sure I will. So let's talk about what we're going to be bringing in because I do have some items that I want to bring into the project. Now, for the first one that I'm bringing in, it's number 11's Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye Happiness. Okay, it's a gimme product, a product that's almost gone. That I wanted to bring in this Skin Iceland. It's just a baby. I don't even think you can see I don't think that's going to focus and let you see. This is their Brightening Eye Serum. This is just a little sample. It was 0.1 ounce. It's three milliliters of product. I'm fairly certain that one's going to be done next month, but I wanted to try this because I've never tried. This is the first thing I think I've ever tried from Skin Iceland. No, that can't be right. Anyway, I like trying eye serums, so that's coming in there. And then we have Mr. Sandman. Bring me a dream. Okay, I'm going to get in trouble if I keep saying. Um, an item you use before bed. 
So for that, I brought in this brand new bottle of the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleanser. I've never used this before, but Clinique is reminds me of Misty. So I thought, oh, this is a good place to put this. So I figured I would put this in and put it in as a to finish. And I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's an oil base or if it's a micellar type of water. I don't know. I've never used it. So we'll see. But this is going to come in to finish. It's a one ounce bottle. Then we have American Bandstand. And this is an anti-aging product because Dick Clark didn't age for a very, very long time. I am going to bring in this. So this is the Murad Resurgence Targeted Wrinkle Corrector. And it looks impressive until you get it out of the box. That's a lot of box for little thing. Now, I'm not exactly certain how long this will last me because there's a lot of wrinkles here, you know. So we're just going to go ahead and use this until it's gone because if it if it helps if it does anything down here with the dynamics i will be thrilled all right then for barbie i am bringing in a pink item packaging name etc i'm going to bring in this hemp bottle this is one of the 2.25 ounces this one is in pink citron and mimosa flower this came in a set with a couple others mm, yeah i don't love it um, this is going to end up, oh man, yeah, no, I'm going to end up, I'm going to try and use this to the best of my ability. This is definitely going to have to be used on my legs because I think this might kick off my allergies. <laughs> something in there that's not great for me. But because it had pink citron and we needed something pink, I thought this would be a good product to put in here. And then I am bringing in Ruby D and that mm. is a red item. For that, I'm going to bring in my strawberry shortcake blush. This is also from Glamlight. This was from the strawberry shortcake collection, obviously. I have not ever used this. It has a mirror in it. It is a very, very pretty, very bubblegummy pink blush. I'm going to just do this for five uses just because I haven't used it. Oh, shoot. Wrong, wrong hand. I haven't used it and I want to. Can, oh, can you see it? I don't know if you can even see it there. It is very bright pink. You, know, you can tell that it's pink, but I don't know if that you can tell that it's bright pink. So that will be coming into the project also. Yay. All right. So that is everything for the project. Let's get into our music moment. Ooh. For this, I thought I wanted to kind of stick with the era. And Misty's got so many amazing songs in here. I thought, oh, well, I could actually just, you know, do one of the songs that she has and and link, you know, a video for it like I do with all my other ones. And then I thought, ah, as much as I love these songs, Misty came up with these. So it's not really me finding a song for you. And I thought that was kind of cheating. So I decided that I'm going to try to stay kind of within the era, but I'm going to pick songs that she doesn't have in here. Um... I may end up picking something by artist she has in here, but it will be something that is related, not necessarily a song that she picked, if that makes sense. Hopefully. Anyway, the song for this video is going to be Build Me Up Buttercup by The Foundations. Now, the song is about, basically, it's about a relationship. I'm going to put on my glasses for some of this because I'm going to be reading you things. So, the, 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 the point of the song, what the lyrics are saying, it's a picture of dis a disappointing one-sided love affair. But it's got a very upbeat, there's cats fighting in my yard. It's got a very bouncy, upbeat melody, and it's got a great hook. The chorus is definitely one of those that sticks in your head. Now, this was written by Tony McCauley and Mike Diabo, and... At that time, Diablo was the lead singer for Manfred Mann. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the foundations. Let's, let's just talk about them. What was going on is this was a band that was formed in 1967. They're a UK band. They were the first, this is the part that's weird. They were the first UK band that was multi-ethnic 
I guess is probably the best way to put that, to be on the charts for the UK. They actually have, okay, no, they, they act, the quote is, they were the first multiracial group to have a number one hit in the UK in the 1960s. They had British members, members from the West Indies, and a Sri Lankan member. Now, so I said they formed in 67, and Build Me Up Buttercup came from 1968. They did have some lineup changes. So Build Me Up Buttercup was the was sung by the replacement lead singer. And, uh, oh, what's his name? Craig something. No. Clem Curtis? No, Clem Curtis is the one that left. And uh, I'll get you there. Hold on just a second. All right. Colin Young is singing the lead vocals on this song. There was a weird thing that was going on in the 60s in Britain at that time. So this is where the only pop music that, or the only kind of rock pop, whatever music that you're getting from them is on like BBC One. And so there were a lot of pirate radio stations. I don't know if you've seen the movie Pirate Radio. That was a real thing. There were um, radio stations that were broadcasting and they were broadcasting a lot of the rock stuff. And they were either on foreign soil or they were so far offshore in waters where it would be considered not part of being on the, not being part of the UK technically. I don't know how many feet you have to be out to be considered international waters and all that stuff, but I know that's a thing. So what happened was apparently because of all of these things going on and because the BBC was only doing like two hours of like, popular music or top 40 music or whatnot they were actually looking for they were looking for bands that weren't getting a lot of play on pirate radio and they came across the foundations essentially so of course by doing that it got them a hit and got them recognized well then they start to get recognized and they have other music there's some lineup changes Build Me Up Buttercup comes out, and it is, it's been used in movies. It ended up hitting, so it released in 68. In the UK, it rose to number two on the pop charts. Now, here's the fun part about this. It hit number three on the Billboard Hot 100, but it got to number one on Cashbox. Now, Cashbox is another one of those charting things that we haven't talked about. Billboard is the biggest one that has been around forever, but Cashbox is also a really big one too. And Billboard, Billboard Magazine basically used to publish all of their stuff. I don't even, I think now you just look them up online. I don't even know if they do publish a magazine. But Billboard had all of the charts. They had the country charts, they had the R&B charts, they had all of them the pop, the main, you know, the crossover, the alternative, they've always been the one that's kind of been putting that information out there. Cashbox, we don't hear about as often, but they did actually manage to hit the Cashbox chart too, which that part's pretty cool. The bad thing about this is that the band actually kind of broke up in 1970. So they, they do fit the, the time period, but they did not hang around long. They did apparently have another U.S. hit, but... It's not one that I'm actually even familiar with. So, um, Build Me a Buttercup is probably most famously known for being in the sound or in the movie. Um, what's the name of the movie? There's something about Mary. Yes, that's the one. There's something about Mary. Uh, but apparently, it's in their closing credits or something. I don't remember. I don't remember truthfully. All right. Uh, oh, and, and then I was saying that. Um, Diablo was in Manfred Mann, but then was also part of the, was also one of the authors of the song. He also did do the keyboards for the song, just so that you're aware. And, you know, Manfred Mann had all kinds of different hits back in the day and then kind of changed their sound and we'll get to them some other day. So anyway, I am going to be linking a version of Build Me a Buttercup down in the description box for your listening and viewing pleasure. I don't know if there's anything live out there. I actually didn't find a video before I started filming. I just knew which song I wanted to do. Um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know. But it's a happy, bouncy song, so hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, we're done. Cut off the crazy train. Time for bed. 
that is everything that I do have for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the music. And until next time, everybody, see ya. Bye.